Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, you know when you get something in your eye? I'm not going to say it was that, but because that feels like a golf ball when you get something in your eye. Oh, my God. Well, this wasn't that, thankfully. Um, I had Taffy up here, and so we got cat hair and stuff flying all over the place. But now that that's all done and said and 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 gone, how the hell are you? My name is G. I'm an astrologer, and you're watching all astrology. Stick around, Capricorn. Whether you're a Capricorn birthday or a Capricorn rising sign, whatever you are, and if you don't know what you are, comment to me below. I will find that out for you, and I will help you out in any way that I can. So I'm going to talk about the month of June because the energetics of June are changing. They are changing. And the interesting thing is, is that June's story actually began mid-May. Yeah, mid-May. So in mid-May, Jupiter, the planet that is considered the most beneficial planet in the universe that we know of, is moving. It's leaving the sign of Aries. And Aries is all about being very combative. Aries is about fighting. Aries is about being impulsive and taking actions. You know, like when sometimes you may talk to somebody about something and all of a sudden one of the people that you're talking to, like say you're in a group of friends, and all of a sudden instead of a conversation about it, one of the friends just takes off and goes and does it. That's Aries. Super impulsive doesn't have patience, is sick of talking about it. Let's just do it and be about it already. That's Aries. Jupiter had been there for the past 14 months. So now Jupiter is leaving. Actually, I think it was, you know, I think it was shorter. I think it was shorter. Thank God. And I only say that, like, I only say thank God because Jupiter is typically very beneficial. But whatever it touches, it makes more of it. It expands upon it. It exaggerates it. It adds to things. Like that's Jupiter. So leaving fiery, impulsive, self-starting, I like to start and initiate things, Aries, now that energy goes into Taurus. And Taurus is more about stabilizing things. Taurus is about things aren't going to be, they aren't going to move as much. Taurus, things move down, they slow down a little bit. They take, they get traction. They get traction. And when I mean by they get traction, because that sounds a little strange of what I'm trying to say. Um, you know how sometimes you can be flailing all about and yet not get anywhere? Like you're moving, but you're not making any progress, right? You're like, I'm working, but I'm not making any progress. I'm writing, but I'm still not done. Or I've been washing these, I've been cleaning that closet out for three years now, and the shit is still everywhere. It's still full. What is going on? There's a difference. You can move and not accomplish things or not make any headway. When the energy moves into Taurus, that changes. We start to make some headway. We start to literally, now we're like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're seeing something. Now we're like, this feels a little bit better because Taurus has the ability to, you know, it's magnetic. And so whatever Jupiter's working on, whatever it started in Aries, it's becoming a little more solidified when it gets that Taurus energy. It stops moving around so fast and it slows down. And then we're like, aha, let's get a grip on this. Let's let me let me take a look at this. It slows down a little bit. Okay. And Taurus is our money. It's our values. It's our income. It's our love. It's who we love and what we love. Taurus rules the five senses of your body. Smells, taste, touch. So your vision, your hearing. Okay. You're, you're the spoken word even, right? Taurus is the neck and the part of the body. So the throat, I hear a lot of people who are Tauruses uh, comment about sometimes they were late talkers in, when they were young. And not only were they late talkers, but they say that if they talk too much, 
they will notice they'll have like a sore throat at the end of the day. I know I get that, especially after the lives or if I've been recording a lot of videos in one day, I try to get them done as much as fast as I can sometimes, depending upon my availability and stuff and in the room and the equipment. And so if I have to kind of like do like a power recording, right, it's like after that, I'm like, holy shit, you know? So Taurus energy values banking um, food, creature comforts, the earth. It's an earth sign, right? So Jupiter goes there and Jupiter can expand upon things. So when Jupiter expands upon, it's like all of a sudden, whatever we thought our values were, there's somehow more of it. So there might be some exaggerations. There might be some exaggerations. And remember, this is love too. My values and valuing myself. So Jupiter for Capricorn. I don't know if I said this was a reading for Capricorn at the beginning. I apologize. I might have said Cappy. But Capricorn, this is for you. Okay. So Taurus made that change mid-May. Jupiter, I said. Jupiter made that change mid-May. Okay. And so this is really beneficial for Capricorn energy. Because Taurus is Earth. Capricorn is Earth. This is a benefit. This is a trine energy. Very beneficial, right? Now, um, oh my God, I can't believe all the cat hair I have on my, look at, can you see that? That's, yeah, I got taffy all over me. <laughs> so I got my notes here and I just got to go over them real quick one more time to make sure we're on the right thing. Yeah. All right. So now Taurus energy for you is in your fifth house. So this is children and your creations, children, but it can be anything you do for fun and games and play and sports, right? Taurus in the fifth house, food, 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 Taurus in the fifth food. Absolutely. Going out to eat. Yeah. Taurus, Venus, beauty, the earth, so this is like getting the nails done, the salon, the makeup, right? And if you're not into hair and nails and all that stuff, what about clothing and gear? I think of masculine energy, Capricorn, masculine energy. They might be into like textiles for sure, but it's, you know, lining up with you. It, it's going to, it's going to maybe because it's Taurus. So do you collect coins? right? Are you into the stock market? Uh, but it wants something it can hold. So that's why I said coins, like gold and silver and stuff like that. Uh, I know a Capricorn who would collect like, uh, what was it, sports cards or and stamps or even comic books, right? I don't know if people still do that. But yeah, um, that's something you can hold. You know, if you can hold it, you own it type of thing. This is that. But it's having a fun time with it, right? Having a fun time. So if it's Taurus, anything with the earth, anything with the earth, okay? Things that are going to involve the earth. So that could be things like keeping the earth healthy, right? Keeping the earth healthy. But food is a big deal too, because if we can keep the earth healthy, healthy we're keeping the vegetation and the animals healthy. So this kind of all weaves into that Capricorn. It kind of all weaves into that. Now you could other find other ways of having fun even if you're not into the shops and stuff, but what do you do for entertainment? Well, Taurus likes quality for entertainment. So if it's going to go out, it might go to the show or the theater. It might go to the movies, you know, it might go to performances. Uh, if it's quality, if it's tangible, I think of fine art, fine art. And there's different ways that we can, this can be antiques. This can literally be like paintings, you know, like going to museums, things that can really hold their value over time. Capricorn's pretty smart and it's all about time, long-term, right? And Taurus is all about quality and beauty, right? So you're going to have an abundance suddenly. All of this is going to grow. It begins in May and it lasts for the next 14 months of your life. You have Jupiter in your fifth house. Are you expecting another child? Are some of you expecting another child? Typically, we don't think Jupiter as a child, but it's Jupiter in the fifth house. So there could be like a lot of children suddenly. So maybe it's not you having a child, but maybe you're caring for other people's children. Maybe you do sports stuff because the fifth house is having fun and games and sports. So maybe you're like a coach or something. There can be something lined up like that for you. Um, yeah, it's that fifth house energy creating. Maybe there's just more creations. Maybe you 
make things. Maybe you create things. What's your creative thing? Taurus is very creative. Even if you're not creative with food, you could do it in different ways, right? Crafting, vlogging, blogging, like do something that just, it just lines up with who you are. It, it, it's uniquely you. But remember, Taurus is the spoken word, which is kind of why I mentioned blogging, because there's like, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show it, right? Like, this is beautiful. I love it. But sports is a big deal, again, because it's that fifth house. Even if you're not into sports, but something fun, whatever you do for laughter and joy, the fifth house is your happy place. So you have Jupiter in your happy place. And it's most beneficial. So I'm very happy to be able to share that with you, Capricorn. Um, we go to the beginning of June and we have a full moon. Now, Jupiter shows up again because we have a full moon in Sagittarius energy. And the full moon for you in the Sagittarius energy is in your 12th house, Cappy. 12th house is like my subconscious. It's things that I'm not really necessarily aware of. It's like when you're sleeping and you're dreaming, that's the 12th house. So for some of you, you might be like, well, gosh, this is kind of not so thrilling. Well, it doesn't have to be not so thrilling, especially if you keep track of your dreams. Do you dream a lot? You might, you know, there might be things that, you know, having Jupiter there, there might be really interesting adventures that you go on because Jupiter is wisdom and knowledge and traveling and higher education and learning. But the 12th house isn't just that. It can also be traveling overseas. Right. That's the 12th house. I go away. I have a friend, a YouTube friend, and she went away. She went overseas. Right. And she went to school and then she ended up and this is her. She's got Sagittarius in her 12th. She ended up being an educator, a college educator overseas. And this is what she was doing for work. 12th house, Jupiter in the Sagittarius in the 12th house. That's what she did for a living, working overseas. And you don't have to be the one working overseas, but maybe your employer is overseas, right? There's different ways where this energy can line up and work out for people in their lives. But a full moon means a release, a completion of some sort. Okay. And many times there can be, because it's Sagittarius, so we're thinking of beliefs, the release of a belief of some sort. Maybe you have subconscious judgments. That's Sagittarius energy, Jupiter, subconscious judgments on people, right? Possibly releasing a belief about traveling, some belief about traveling overseas because it's Jupiter and it's Sagittarius, all right? This is also the court system, the judicial system about judges. This is my philosophy on life. This is spirituality, big time spirituality because you got Jupiter in the house of God and Jupiter is considered the ancient ruler of the 12th house, right? So we have a lot of very, there's a lot of high energies here, a lot of energies that speak to religion and kumbaya and praying and meditation, a lot of that going on here. So do you enjoy time alone? Are you kind of still figuring all that out? This is a release and an ending. So possibly, possibly you're just changing a belief and releasing it and letting it go. So it doesn't seem necessarily all that exciting, but look for the degrees. You may have something there. 13, 17, 13 degrees, 17 minutes in the sign of Sagittarius. Uh, if you don't know and you want to know, comment below and I will figure that out. I will help you in any way that I can. Remember Sagittarius and because it's a full moon, there's emotions involved with this. So it could have to do something with family. Yeah. Something from the past. Something about possibly even foreign lands and foreign languages. Okay. Now we move on and we go to the 17th and the 18th of June. We have a new beginning. It's called a new moon. And this is a new moon in, in Gemini. All right. Gemini energy. So Mercury rules this new moon. Mercury. All right. So Mercury is how I think. It's my thoughts. It's my communications. It's who I'm talking to. It's networking. It's coworkers. It's siblings its neighbors. And those can be your physical neighbors. It can also be your digital neighbors, right? Now for you, Cappy, this is in your sixth house. So this is definitely about work and business for sure. Do you teach? If you have Gemini in the sixth house, are you a teacher? This is the place of a teacher, Gemini in the sixth house, because it's a communicator. It's somebody who gathers information. And if you're not teaching, you're selling something or you're speaking. It's a white collar worker. You're using your words. You know how to write. You know how to communicate, right? So this is a strong sign for an educator. It's also a strong sign for a jack of all trades. Um, which is somebody who's like, 
I'm a jack of all trades, yet a master of none, right? And so there may be a lack of focus within the job and the routine and, and trying to figure out what that is for you. Like you haven't found your thing yet, possibly for some of you, or maybe you found your thing and you're switching it up. Gemini energy is very flexible. It likes to switch things up. So this is a new moon and it means it's a new beginning. Now the sixth house is your daily routines. It's your, it's your tasks. It's your projects. It's the to-do lists. It is health. It can include pets. It can include the health of those pets, but it's something you do every single day. All right. It can include what you do for a living uh, as in your job and your work projects, as well as in projects at home. OK, so Gemini energy, co-workers, networking and those kind of conversations, but even even people you live with. OK, not necessarily your kids, but if you have a spouse, right, that kind of be like your peer energy, because it's in that domestic aspect. You know, like I can think of multi-generational families all living under one roof or, or myself. I'm living with people and I don't think we're related by blood. At least we better not be right, because one of one of. Yeah the couple they're married. <laughs> so, so we're kind of like peer. It's that peer energy for us, right? So there's talking and it's a new beginning and it's a new beginning about the way you think and the way you communicate. How do you talk? It's also about how you get information because it's Gemini. It's the scribe. It watches, it pays attention, but it consumes information using this, but it also reads, right? It also reads and it writes things down. It's a, a dear diary, right? It's the scribe. It's the writer, but it's also the blogger and the vlogger. Something new. You have a new beginning and it's the 17th and the 18th of June. Uh, because it's at 1137 p.m. at night, adjust for the time zone that you live in. 1137 is in the central daylight time zone because that's where I'm at. So you adjust now. You want to know about the time because a new moon says the, the teaching is eight hours before that new moon is the magic time. It's like the hours of power for manifesting what you want in your life. So you either jot things down or you speak them into the out into the ethers or you have a little you light a candle, do whatever you do that works for you. OK, have a ceremony, whatever, whatever works for you or you just meditate even whatever. But this is all about the mind because it's mercury. It's all about the mind. So this is a really powerful, powerful new moon because it is about our mind. So maybe you want to change the way you think about what you do for work. Maybe you think there are things that you could do for work, but maybe you think you can't do those things. Like one minute you're like, oh, maybe I should do that. And then you're like, oh no, I can't do that because of this. And you've got like all these reasons that why you can't do that thing, you know, because Gemini is, is like that, you know, it's duality. It, it says, I can see all the reasons why I can do it. And then I can list you all just as many reasons why I can't do it. Right. Well, sometimes we get stuck on one of those sides. And we don't realize we're stuck. So there may be things that you can do that you don't realize you have the ability to do. The question is, are you going to use this new moon to open up your mind to consider stuff you haven't considered before? And what are those things? It has to do with health. It has to do with work and work routines and projects and pets. It has to do with to-do lists it has to do with task. It has to do with the way that you can serve in the mundane way. So it's not glamorous. And I know that's hard for Capricorn. Capricorn wants to be on top. It wants all the recognition. It wants the kudos. You know, it wants the awards. It wants that recognition. But the sixth house means what I'm doing, it's not real flashy. It might not be something that's revered by society, but I'm telling you this, it doesn't mean that society is correct because it's not. Our societies, our cultures are, you know, especially here in the United States, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't try to speak about other places that I don't live, but here in the U.S., our teachers make the least amount of money in the world. They suck. The teachers don't suck, but the money that they make sucks. That's what sucks. 
It's not that they're making the least amount of money because they suck. I know it came out like I said they suck. That's not what I meant. I get angry over it because I'm very passionate about teachers. I really am. Um, as a child, the people that I looked up to my, my, were my teachers. And not all of them because not all teachers are the same. I get that. You know, not all teachers. And I, I've had those. I've had my share of teachers that, that I didn't think very highly of. And this was me as a little kid. I didn't, I know, right? I didn't think real highly of them. I wanted teachers who were really going to teach though, like teach, damn it. And to me, that is just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really passionate about that. I have a strong passion for that. So to me, teaching is like one of the most important things. And our teachers should get more money. They do so much. So just remember if you got Gemini in that sixth house of work and daily routines and teaching and the ability to be a good teacher, the ability to be a good communicator, an effective communicator, it might be dependent upon your thoughts. So if you're not doing it, why aren't you doing it? If you're not doing it, it's because your own thoughts are limiting you from doing it. So think about that when you're thinking about your new moon, because this new moon, when we have a new moon in our thoughts, it's time to start weeding. What happens with the garden when we don't weed, right? We have to get those weeds out or they overtake the garden and we lose all the vegetables. It's time to weed. And the thing about weeding is you have to weed often. It's not just a one-time thing, right? Nine times out of 10, you didn't get the whole damn weed out by the root. So this is the opportunity where we're honing that in and, and we're like, okay, I'm, I'm being, holding myself accountable for the thoughts that I keep. All right. And June 17th, 18th, 1137 PM, the eight hours before central daylight time zone, adjust for where you live. It's your opportunity to change the way you think about your daily routines, about your health, about your job, about your projects. It is time for you to hold yourself accountable for what you're doing or not doing. If you're happy or not happy. You have the ability to be flexible. You have the ability to do that. You have the ability to pivot. You have the ability to change your mind. And then once you do, you have the ability to zero in and focus. And I know that can seem like it escapes you because the ability to focus is your Sagittarius energy. And that's in your 12th house, the house of the hidden. And so that's why for many of you, you have unconscious beliefs that may be limiting you. You see? So it's all connected. It's all connected. So use this opportunity. If you're unhappy with something in your world, use this opportunity energetically to make that change and be the change that you want to see. And that's not mine. I stole that from whoever the hell from years ago. So just so you know, it is time for you to do that. Adjust for your time zone, right? Central daylight time zone. And understand that something about children and creating is a happy place moment in Jupiter. And so that release about limiting beliefs with that full moon at the beginning of the month. And now here we come at the end of the month and we still have Jupiter for 14 months in your happy place. Pay attention, wake up. There might be an opportunity I don't know why there was just something with children. There might be an opportunity, something with children. It might be emotionally satisfying. It may bring you joy and it's possible you might make some money. Yes. Cause that's Jupiter and Taurus. You might make some money. If you don't know and you want to know comment below, I will help you out in any way I can. I will see you Cappy in the next video. Bye-bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.